storytelling happens in 185 cities every Wednesday 9 a.m. just like this uh, so thank you so much for participating here uh, today uh, we are uh, welcoming one of our neighbors from uh, from the West uh, Lamont Gwynn from Lamont G photography uh, was uh, is uh, introduced to us through the one MC Orlando group uh, and has applied to present with us so we're happy to welcome him today he's here to tell us how to tell a story how to use nonverbal communication in the one medium that allows you to not say any words, which is photography. So it's going to be pretty interesting. We're really looking forward to it. So without further ado, round of applause for Lamont. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Again, Good morning. my name is Lamont Gwen, and I teach people how to express a feeling, an emotion, or send a message through a photo, specifically through headshots and marketing images. I am more than just a photographer, I am an expression coach. And people hire me because I help them establish trust and build confidence in them and their brand. But when I started in 2009, that was not who I was. As a matter of fact, what happened was in 2009 I purchased a camera, went to an event, took some photos on automatic and said, hey, I'm going to start a photography business. <laughs> but outside of that arena of events, what happened was when I had people who said, come to our family photos or take pictures of us, my photos were horrible. The lighting was bad. I had no idea what I was doing. And so I struggled two years in doing that. In 2011, I found a photographer in New York who uh, did a lighting seminar called Light is Life. I took that workshop four times. And what it really helped me to do was see in light. So when I went to the studio and I set up my, my, my lighting, I was able to produce really technically beautifully lit, well lit images. But to me, something else was missing. And so for two more years, I struggled. And in 2013, I decided I was gonna shut my business down. And I remember sitting with my mom and just bawling because I loved what I did, but I just didn't feel like I was making any progress. So I kind of regrouped from that. And in 2014, I relaunched my business. And I decided to focus on learning how to really connect with people. And through that experience and that learning experience, I then, in 2015, became the expression coach. And I'm here today to share with you what I learned through that process of teaching people how to express a feeling. And so that's why I'm here to do this work, this presentation, Speaking While Solid, seven tips to taking captivating photos. The basis of this presentation is about communication. Without it, civilization would be lost. Communication is at the very foundation of the human experience, so much so that a person born deaf and blind can learn how to communicate. Take a look.
For those of you who aren't familiar, that's the, a clip from the story life of Helen Keller, who was both deaf and blind. W-A-T-E-R. That one word, signed in the palm of her hand, had such a profound effect on her that she became the very, the very first person to earn her Bachelor's of Arts degree as a deaf and blind person. Now when we think about communication, we often think about verbal communication the words and phrases that come out of our mouths. But according to, but according to Dr. Albert Moran, words only make up 7% of our communication. Tone and voice, 38%, but 55% is body language, or what we call as nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication is so profound that even animators learn how to create cartoon characters that communicate to each other nonverbally, and we're able to recognize that experience from our seats in the audience. Take a look. This is the opening scene from the movie Up. By a show of hands, how many didn't understand what happened? I turned the movie off, I turned the sound off so that you could really deliver the point because the, the sound would actually carry the emotion, but we were able to understand that. So let's take a look at some of those nonverbal cues. Concentration, you see the tilt of the head, the focus in the eyes, the tongue out of her mouth? You can actually see the concentration. How about acceptance? When he saw all those babies, at first he was panicked, but you can see the wide smile, the open eyes. Compare that with concern. The tilt of the head, the, the, the eyes are a lot smaller, the frown in the mouth, and then despair. Eyes closed, head back, shoulders down. So we can pick those, we can pick those things up. So we what I found out is we learned we communicate in six basic ways non-verbally. Our face, eyes, eyebrows, and mouth. Our head movement, our posture, our body movement. Our gesturing and our touching. Let's just take the first two for the sake of time. With our face, eyes, eyebrows, and mouth, these are some of the things that we're able to communicate. Let's take, for, once, for instance, concentration. Let's go back to that. By a show of hands, how many have been silently sitting in a room and all of a sudden the question comes up, what are you thinking about? Or what's wrong? How many have ever experienced that before? Yeah. It's those nonverbal cues that we pick up. What about head movement? Here's some of the things that we can pick up just in head movement. So we're talking about communicating one-on-one, -on -one. but here's the question. Do we really pick up on nonverbal cues from photos of people? So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at six individuals. Now I'm going to set some context for them because if I just put up fo uh, photos of people's faces, it didn't mean anything. 
But if we add some context behind it, then, and you become invested in it, then it has a meaning. So let's meet Jim. Jim is the Vice President of Senior Engagement at One Family Senior Living. His quote is, at, our, at One Family Senior Living, I make sure our clients are treated with compassion and care. He looked like that type of guy. Would you trust your family with this guy? How about Stacy? She's a life coach. I will coach you to become a better version of yourself. Is that convincing? Is that message congruent with her photo? We have Bob. He's a financial advisor. <laughs> Trust me to manage your finances in the most responsible way. Is he going to take care of your portfolio? Here's Jewel. She's a tax attorney. My strength is understanding business and demographics of my clients. Steve, he's a medical director. My goal is to provide outstanding leadership needed for the best care of our patients. Something you pick up. And lastly, we have Trish. She's a marketing director. We love marketing, and we especially enjoy working with small businesses. You want her to market your business? So here are the six people. Can I just get an audience response? How do you feel seeing their message in their photo? Did, did, did any sh anybody shut it up? What do you get? They missed it. They missed it, right? So let's go back through, and instead of this gym, you got this gym. At One Family Living, I make sure our clients are treated with compassion and care. You see the compassion in his eyes? Stacy, instead of this Stacy, this Stacy. I will coach you to become a better version of yourself. You feel that? Here's Bob. Trust me to manage your finances in the most responsible way. You still don't trust me. I don't know much. I'm gonna I'm gonna change this one out because I get that all the time. But be, he's not really a financial advisor. He's really a developer. And we did this headshot as a developer because he wants to come off um, a little cocky with the <laughs> with the level of people that he works around. They need to see that he's serious and that he's about his business. And so we coached him. I coached him to this, this expression just so that he could have that edge when folks went to his website and saw him. His jewel, my strength is understanding the business and demographics of my clients much better, right? Steve, a better Steve. And finally, Trish. And she really is, she really is a marketing person. Oh, sorry, go back. We love marketing, and we especially enjoy working with small businesses. Now, all of those previous headshots that you saw, those previous photos, were not photos that I told people look this way. This is exactly how they were expressing in front of the camera. And so, what I want to do, so at this point, we've learned that you get it. We do pick up nonverbal cues. How many people believe that now and understand that a lot better now, right? So that leads us to a question. How can I take more captivating photos whenever I'm in front of the camera? So what we're gonna do is go through seven tips to taking captivating in photos. The first one is don't pose. Oftentimes when folks get in front of the camera, they get rigid and they pose. Posing is not who you are. And so instead of posing, what you want to do is breathe and feel. Oftentimes with my clients, I have them take deep breaths in and deep breaths out because it relaxes them. And then feel the emotion you want people to perceive about you. Don't overthink the process. A lot of times people get into their head with the negative, what I call Dolby surround sound negative head chatter. We look at ourselves in the mirror all, every day and we see all of our flaws. 
So don't overthink the process, but what you want to do is imagine and enjoy the experience. Imagination is so important because it helps you to relax, it helps you to get into the, get into the feeling of taking a photo. Enjoying the experience, listen, people make it so, they make it a chore. Like someone told me one time, I believe that I always looked at a headshot like a flu shot. <laughs> and so with that experience, we, we just kind of hate it. But if we change our mindset and said, you know what, I'm going to go in here to enjoy the experience, it drastically changed how you stand in front of the camera. Don't think about perceived flaws. I think I, I said this earlier. We look at ourselves all the time in, in, in the mirror, and what we perceive as flaws, people really don't see them. And so, just because I know when I take photos, one eye is bigger than the other, it's, it's just the way I photograph, or my hairline is not even. That's a perceived flaw. That's not what people look, look at. Channel how you want to be perceived. Confidence, then channel that confidence. Go back to a time and place in your mind when you're in front of the camera when you felt your most confident. See what you saw, hear what you heard, feel what you felt. And once you feel that, once that's there, open your eyes and project it out and you'll take a better picture. That guy up there did not like taking photos but he practiced in the mirror. It may seem silly at first, but when you practice and seeing yourself in the mirror, and you practice, they say practice makes not perfect improvement. So at the end of this, the takeaway is this. People believe what people perceive. So the question is, how are people perceiving you online? If you need help figuring that out, you know someone who might need help figuring that out, I would love to, to have a conversation with you. Again, my name is Lamar Gwynn. I am the expression coach for Thank you for your time. That was great. Give it up for Lamar. We like that. Yeah. Helpful? Yeah? OK. All right, let's do some questions. Who's got a question for Lamar? In the back, Steve, we'll get one for you. Make sure you introduce yourself before you ask. Okay. Hi, I'm Paul Bork with Volusia Senior Learning. So that people aren't so stiff when they take a photo, can you do like a video uh, of the person and then do a quick still shot of that person to try to get a more relaxed look in a photo? So, that is probably a whole lot more challenging because if you were to take shots of me as I'm talking, what you're gonna get is those micro expressions through the communication. And so I try that at times with my clients, but I don't ever use those photos. The purpose of me getting them to talk and to communicate through those photos is to get them relaxed because there are certain things that, there is a level of posing that you do when, you're, when, when I work with my clients. So talking them through like doing a video and then chopping it, it just really is a hard thing to do. Hi, I'm Steve Keeler. Hi, Steve. Uh, how do you generate revenue in your business? Where's, where's the main sources of income coming from? So the main sources of income come from clients, either companies or individuals. That's the main source of income. In any particular category? From the, the photo sessions themselves? Yeah, from the doing? photo sessions themselves. Okay. I, I, um, you said any particular? Any particular niche that you work or category? So, so no, no, I'm broad when it comes to industry, and what I do with my clients is I take your industry and your target audience into account. So for instance, someone who is a financial service advisor, one of my clients is Penn Mutual, 
And a lot of times photographers, photographers will have um, financial service advisors, big smile. But if your client has a seven figure portfolio, they don't need to see you smiling at them. They need to see that you are confident and that you're trustworthy. And so based on your industry and based on your target, old target audience, when I work with my clients, that's what we concentrate on so that you have, you communicate or you attract them to your business. Morning, my great presentation. Uh, my name is Tom Jordan. Going back to when you restarted your business, was there a was there something that flipped in your in your brain? Was there something that triggered you to get back into it? That was a, a moment, I guess I'd ask. No, just sheer desire. I didn't want to give it up. I had invested so much time and energy. And I love working with people. I love that one-on-one -on -one communication. Um, one of the things that I did learn later in the process, okay, by the way, I, I extend answers to questions, so I'll you know, One of the things that I learned and why I'm so good at what I do is I took something very visual and turned it into a feeling. So we, as humans, we break down into three categories, auditory, visual, or kinesthetic. I'm kinesthetic. So for me, I need to feel the photo. A lot of people who are visual need to see it. So what I've been able to do through, my, through, through what I do is add the feeling to it so that people just don't see it, but they feel it. That was the light switch that clicked on later on. But to restart my business, this is sheer desire. Hi, Desiree Villanova, the County Healthcare Guide Black Book. Um, do, you, do your clients retain you short or long term? And also, do you instruct on color, accessories, and all the everything else that goes with it? So, um, this is the hard, hard part of my business. I've had clients who have both who have had headshots for five, six years. Once they get a Lamonte photography headshot, they feel like. They don't want to go to anybody else, but they, this is good enough. And so getting those clients to come back after five years, and that's the turnaround. Once I, unless they change, they're doing something different. So if they say, oh, I'm going to write a book, then I've had clients come back to me and do that, um, to take different headshots. Uh, I do appreciate consultation with clients, and so we do talk about hair, makeup, what to do. I do a questionnaire with my clients to kind of figure out if they're auditory, visual, kinesthetic, so that I know how to approach them when we are um, in the studio. And I also give them an exercise or an assignment to do so that when they come to the photography session, they have an experience they can come with. Well, Simon Santos with Daytona Booster Business Consultants. Um, how do you consider likability? You know, people look at a photo and say, I like him, I don't like him. How, how, how does that play for you? So, likability is, everybody wants to have likability, yes. right? Um, so, a part of that in that likability is the smile aspect, but there are different variations of smile and there are different variations of likability based on industry. And so when it's, it's, we have a really robust discussion. And when I shoot with my clients, I shoot tethered to my system. So as we're shooting and taking pictures, we come around and we have a discussion. We talk about what, um, what's being perceived, what's being communicated. Just the slightest tilt can change the, she can change the, the communication. Just the slightest. And so, Yes, we likability is very important, but again, depending on industry, it either is really high or we bring it down just a little bit. Not likability, but we bring ex we, we with expression we change expression depending on industry. Thanks. Anybody else have one? Hey, Tyler Tyson, I work at the Hilton Beach. Um, what effect does not looking at the camera have on expressing yourself? That's a great question. Um, you don't make a connection with your client, with your potential audience. A lot of times, I've had I've, there's been times when I've had clients who want to do these really creative type of images where they're not looking at the, the camera. 
but you want people to see and feel you. Especially as an entrepreneur, you're the face of your brand. And so if you're looking off into the distance, then you're not really communicating. Your headshot, your marketing images are just one part of your marketing toolkit. And so you want to make sure that the words you use, the images you use, when they see you, they're connecting right away because you only have but so, so much time, especially online, for them to connect with you. Come on, uh, Tyler Com Networks Inc. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the common and maybe uncommon challenges um, that you have experienced yourself, as well as that you've heard about? Um, for the photography industry, uh, you know, in terms of uh, individuals such as yourself getting a camera and going, you know, what are probably the two or three best tips you can give, you know, for stuff that you've learned for, you know, people that are considering a similar business model? First tip is to do your market research and learn the business. A lot of times, like myself, and I'm guilty of it, when I started my business, I had no idea about pricing. I had no idea, um, I did no market research, and so I often took jobs that required a lot of hard work, you know, and did not understand all the work that was involved, and halfway through the project, got really irritated, but that irritation was because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and so that's one of the biggest things, is to know the industry, and find a niche. A lot of photographers today do everything. And what happens is, and I, I love what Bruce Lee said, he says, I'm more afraid of the man who's practiced a kick a thousand times than who's practiced a thousand kicks one time. And so a lot of photographers who do weddings and events, they do everything. They don't specialize in anything. And so how can you be really good at it if you don't specialize? Any photographer can take your headshot. Any photographer can put you in front of the camera and take a picture. But do they specialize in what you need them for? That's another thing that um, I would, would recommend if you're interested in this type of business. Okay. Any other questions? Two more? Two more? Oh, sorry, David. Hi, my name's Russ Adams with Bird Return Technologies. Um, what would a typical session cost uh, for that type of thing? So um, my sessions start at 185, um, and they go up from there. Um, for one million cups, we do a, I, I provide a, a discount for one million cups, but um, that's where they, they that's where they start at, and that includes um, the expression coaching, the final images, the retouching. You also get them in print ready form. Um, that's about the standard. You will find the $50 headshot guy. You will find the, the $99 headshot guy. But the question is, is that person going to give you what you really need? Um, I, and, and in line with that, my tip is, if you don't hire me and you need a headshot, just make sure that they are speaking this language. Because if they're not speaking this language, then you're trusting someone to get an image of you that you'll be left with the responsibility of figuring out how you look in the camera. My tips work, but a lot of folks really need coaching through the process. Good morning, with Toya Carey of Kid Grand Inspirations, my question to you is, what is your policy if someone does not like the final product? What is your policy for that? <laughs> Good question. That's a great question. One of the things, I've had one client walk out of a session because she just wasn't happy with her own self, so she came in with a lot of baggage. I don't experience that um, because when I shoot tethered to my system, we see what is being produced. And so I have eliminated that problem in my business because when we're standing there, when we're looking at the images, then um, people, uh, when they find me, when we make the final um, selection, they have agreed, and I have agreed, and I do a, are you sure? Now don't just tell me you like this just because. I want you to walk away feeling 100% confident that this is going to, this is the photo that's really going to speak to your clients. 
And so because of that, because of that, um, the way that I do that, work with my clients, I, satisfaction, you can look me up online, I have a 5.5 star rating online, and you can check me out on, on LinkedIn, my clients really love what they go through. Uh, hi, Andy Clark with All Aboard Properties. Uh, do you come out to see us, or do we go to you to have the work done? And where are you located if, if we come to you? Okay, so um, I'm in uh, Orlando. I shoot downtown near Lake Eola. So I do have a space for you to come. Um, I will travel if there's, uh, I will travel to an area if there's a group of folks who want to get together and do headshots, I will do that. Um, I actually got down to Florida by a client bringing me here uh, to Orlando to do hitch up at a conference. I went to a marketing event, did my two minute, my, my 30 second speech and walked out with Trish. She was my first client. And I said, what? Is, is, Mark, is a network, networking groups like this good in Orlando? I'm moving here. So I will come to you um, if it's a group, but you can come down to Orlando. It's only an hour. Not bad. Uh, we have a question from Facebook Live. Uh, Lisa asked, what are the top three elements of a perfect photo? The top three elements of, elements of a perfect photo. Technically, the lighting. Yeah. Two, the expression, the communication. And three, what you're wearing is important too. Um, sometimes, one of the things that I tell my clients is designs and shirts don't really work because they can confuse the eye. They can take the eye away from the main. So what you're wearing is really important. Um, big earrings, all of that kind of things, jewelry is not necessary because the, the focus isn't on what you, it's the focus should be on you. So those are the top three. Yeah, that's right there. That's yeah. All right. I think, uh, any last questions? No? All right, round of applause for Lamar. I think this is wonderful. Thank you so much for that. That was great. That was really good. Stay up there. We're gonna we're gonna have you do some work now.